Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. Now, I may upload this actually on Saturday. I'm shooting it on Saturday. I'm debating. But uh, I wanted to return to Neil Adams stuff for several reasons. But one, someone had a really good request. And a, a lot of times when people request things and it feels right, you just go with it. So someone wanted me to do um, a video on Neil's pencils. Obviously, this piece has been inked, um, but I thought it was a great idea. So what I did is I got together about 156 files, about. It's exactly 156 files. Um, and most of it's pencils. There are some inked pieces and um, little surprises along the way. Uh, but it, like getting this together, I've spent maybe an hour accumulating all these files, looking everywhere online that I could. Um, I It's incredibly humbling. And honestly, it made me question what the hell I've been doing in comics for the last <laughs> 20 years. Because I'm like looking at this stuff and I'm like, I suck. Like, what the like what the hell, man? It, it really kicked me in the ass hard. So if you ever need a good ass kicking, this video will, will do the trick. And um, like I had said in the other video, I know that Neil is quite direct. And it was almost like him speaking through the art to me, going like, you need to raise your game, dude. And uh, I'm gonna do it, Neil, <laughs> with with uh, the spirit of you in my soul. But anyway, let's get to this. We're just gonna go through them. I'll I'll share any kind of information I can as we get into it. And uh, as all super fun Sundays hopefully will be, they are super fun. <laughs> I'm like I'm a little exhausted right now, to be honest. I've had a very very busy week and. Uh, I'm a little fried, but it's all right. We'll get through this. So anyway, um, this I think I got from his Facebook page. It's really, really cool. It is inked, like I said. There was As I was going along, it was harder to find just pencils, enough to make like a pretty thick video. His inks are so interesting, or, or uh, other people that have inked them usually do a real nice job. There's some different approaches that people use. Um, but uh, man... I well as we get into it, I'll talk about it. Um, so this this is Superman story, but I I want to say, and I don't know this for sure. I remember towards the end of Wildstorm, maybe in like 2012 to 2015, Scott Williams was inking Neil on something, and I can't remember what it was. I'm not saying it was this, but I was under the impression at that time that he he Neil did have stuff that he had drawn that like had never been finished or had never been inked. And um again, I'm not saying that it was this story, but but um I know I watched an interview with him yesterday. He was talking about like Dead Man and how he had like like a lot of story ideas for the thing. So I mean, Neil seemed to be. I mean, cl clearly he was incredibly prolific, um, and uh, you know probably drew for sixty years professionally, maybe even longer, sixty five. He he strikes me as someone that probably was working as like a teenager. This is really cool. It's it's trippy when you see this like almost um, Jack Kirby kind of like vibe um, sneaking into his stuff. Not sneaking in, but it's um, in in it. But uh, man, he does it good. It, like I said, it's it's weird. It it started to hit me when I had looked at about forty pieces. The video yesterday was impressive. I mean, we look at a lot of great art, and you go, man, I need to get better. This hit me on like another level, like almost like I didn't understand comics. <laughs> like I saw enough of this, and I started going like, "This is like, this is how I like comics. They're, they're exciting. They're fantastic." There's um, energy. The characters all look cool. I, t I touched on it sort of on accident yesterday. But that was one thing that, that st stayed with me is that kind of every run that Neil did on something was, was very iconic. And, like, he kind of owned each book and, and really made it his own. And I know I've actually – it's funny because the longer that I had inked um, when I would eventually end up inking someone new – I would tell them, like, when we would get an opportunity to do a book like Batman, I would say, I would like, this is your chance to do the greatest Batman stuff that you can do and have it go down as, like, when people talk about their favorite Batman iterations, yours could be one of those. And you'd be amazed at how hard it is to get people up for that. Pencilers. <laughs> 
like, come on, man. Like, it's freaking Batman. Let's, let's, let's bring it. Or whatever. I'm, I was well, I was looking at Batman. Some of you think it was Superman. But but any any title, you know what I mean? It's like, you can leave behind diamonds or you can leave behind turds. <laughs> Neil left behind a lot of diamonds. And boobs. All right. One thing that I noticed about his pencil line, you'll see it more on his, his or, or like when he was a, a bit younger, but his pencil line is so active, and at times it almost looks like an ink line. Again, you, I'll point it out when um, I see some pieces that really exemplify that. But um, yeah, he, he really, like, he drew with such a lively line. Uh, it's really wild. This is like such a kick-ass Batman. It's so extreme, you know. Like, man, he's got angles for days. There's like, like it just his his upper lip to his nose. Like, it's just it's a crazy shape. But man, it looks cool. Oh yeah, I was free. I'm not in Clip Studio. I can just hit Escape and it'll straighten up my thing. I was going for the double RR. If you're in Clip Studio, you know that. This one's got a little bit of it, but it's it's like, do you see how his pencil line will get a little darker at times? And then sometimes it's that real light kind of shading. And then he's got his other one that sort of defines lines. Like right here, let me, uh, I'm going to grab my stylus and get out of full screen mode for just one second so I can grab a color. It's like, oh no, here comes Rich with the pointer. No. <laughs> this, but like, this is beautiful right here. Like, like that is just like really, really nice, but it's so different than this. And then he'll hit him with almost like ink type lines where he'll he'll have like a little bit of a blip and a flip, <laughs> like here. So it's it's he's he's almost got four, at least four different sort of line approaches that he does. Cause this is almost feels like like well, I'm sure he's using like the side of the pencil, the tip of the pencil. He may he may switch pencils. I don't know. But yeah, like, look at this. I mean, this is crazy how many different textures he gets. There's something cool about um, him being like a New York cartoonist, too. It just, it's like... You couldn't write like a more interesting like, like it just fits like it's like he's New York, he's like just it all. I don't know. It's just it's sometimes it's like a perfect storm of circumstance, location, talent, skill, and you get like something great. I've got some photos from the continuity office that are really cool. But even this, this probably wasn't even done like. Uh, I don't know what year it was. He doesn't usually date his stuff, but this is really, really good. Really good. Just looks like it's just confident drawing. It really humbled me. Not that I trust me. I I don't have an ego. I'm very aware of where I'm at in the scheme of things. Um, learning to pencil, uh, but man, seeing this, it was just like getting hit with cold and hot water all at once. This is Neil, Neil going like, dude, try harder, work hard on your stuff. This is cool. But when the gods of art talk to you, you should listen. <laughs> this is so cool. Lots of really great tributes to Neil on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. Really interesting stories. So many people met him and there's photos of him with just everyone. I was liking them all as I would see him. Rob Liefeld was sharing some great stories. Jim Lee wrote like a really, really nice thing. Um, I would be curious. To, I, I, I think I followed Dan DiDio, but I, I, Neil mentioned working with Dan. Okay, so this is interesting. So this is the piece that I inked over Neil. I don't have the inked version handy i'm not 100 percent sure where it where it is but um uh i'll let you look at this and 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 um we'll zoom in so you can see things it's a pretty high res scan um and then uh 
I have the pencils somewhere. His pencils were pretty loose. I did ink it over a blue line, but uh, this was the only opportunity that I really had to ever ink Neil, and uh, it just came out of the blue. It wasn't anything I was expecting. It was just, I, I don't know, you get an email, and they're like, hey, you know, do you want to do this? So I went for it. What was interesting is Neil did say that this was one of his favorite covers from these variant covers that he did, um, which was cool to hear, because he did some that I thought were phenomenal. But um, he really liked this one for some reason. So I, I mean, I know I know it's an homage to another piece. All of them were, but uh, I thought that that was kind of cool. It, it definitely the colors. I mean, Alex Sinclair did a beautiful job on the colors. If you see it in black and white, it doesn't look as slick and sort of contemporary. Like my inks, I was definitely trying to get a little uh, more organic with it. But it's it is difficult to see with the colors because they are very shiny. So anyway, but all right, let's continue. So this is again like his old pencils. You see, you see all these different like line qualities he gets as he got older. It became a little more muted in the stuff. But I mean, he's getting a. Th this is from a print set. I can actually do this and probably pull out some of this like color. Yeah, and then let me just darken this a little tiny bit so we can look at it without that uh, color behind it. But you you can really really see that he he has a sharp line that he uses. He has just like a normal pencil line he gets this and then this and and honestly it is as an inker th this is very difficult stuff to translate because you have lines that are almost like not scribbled but but he'll go in and kind of do um almost um where like normal line work is kind of like this they're like lines and then you know you might have a render through it but he'll he'll go in and really give it one of these and those like you those in jet black or dark ink can look funky the arm hair blending into these black areas they're they're all you know they're they're challenges i mean you just have to work slow and make sure that you're controlling the the values but um you know like in here you see like he has the the line that's connected and it's you know there's definitely some interpretation of all but he puts it all in for you man it's great <clears throat> sorry my cat started to fight let me open the curtain curtain tends to get him wound up oh this is um one of those heritage sorry it's one of those heritage scans they get pulled sometimes so it's a uh, distorted little bit so this is megalith this was from some of the continuity stuff i actually really liked a lot of the continuity books that he did i thought this was really nice really really good it's interesting too because when i saw this it reminded me of him talking about frazetta and painting with fire and saying that um, you know he had seen the Al Cap strip, and he said it it looked really good, um, but we didn't know that Frank was doing them, and uh, it was interesting. But that was actually probably the first time that I really saw any like in depth interviews with Neil was in that Painting with Fire documentary. This is really really cool. as I was grabbing pencils, this was actually one of the first pieces that I grabbed in ink, um, even though it's coming up out of order. But I grabbed it because I thought it, it in a way, kind of captured some of his pencil line better than, um, you know, like uh, some inks. Because it's, you know, you could say his pencil line at times is a little hairy and, like, stuff like this uh, it keep keeps that. This stuff is always amazing to me. Um, these really really fine and kind of scribbly lines. I always think that that's like really cool looking. He gets them here too. You can see them Oh, yeah, this is good. So in the in the video yesterday, I accidentally referred to my Muhammad Ali or Superman versus Muhammad Ali. I knew it was that order. It was funny when I I, I said it the other way and I'm like I bet you anything it's Superman versus Muhammad Ali. Um, I call it a Marvel Treasury book. What I meant is it's the size of a Marvel Treasury book. So anyway, I didn't catch it until I, I heard the video back. And then I was like, oh, yeah. I just, it's like, um, I use that as a generic term for the size of the book. But DC is obviously going to be called a Marvel, Marvel Treasury edition. 
but it was good. It was, you know, and it was one of those things that I didn't know the book existed, but like some, and like I started collecting in the nineties. And so at some point I was looking through a back issue bin and I saw it and I was like, what is this? And then I looked through it and I was like, oh my God, the art is amazing. Um, and so I bought it, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was like, I kind of just sort of stumbled up. We saw this already, but just, there's a, there's a few, what I thought might be double files in here. This is great too. God. Yeah, just seeing this stuff, it really just kicked me in the ass hard. It's, this has been a very profound two days for me. Because I think I was already sort of in that mindset where I, I, I'm pushing myself really hard right now and um, in a good way. But uh, yeah, seeing this, I went like, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> there's levels that's the thing i tell this to the patrons I, I say that i said it in a video we did a we do a monthly question and answer and i said to people i said it's it's surprising to me um how many people will think that they're much further along than they are like they'll go oh, i've got this down or i've got this down and you see their work and you're like man they really don't see their work for what it is so it's, it's interesting but there's there's layers to it and levels so this was interesting he shared this four times and i i didn't get a good look at it if they were all different but uh i think it's the same piece just four times it's pretty cool i definitely see some kirby in his stuff at times it's a great photo that was online of jack and neil it looked like maybe the 70s or early 80s it was really cool Man, this is so good he has so much energy in his stuff. That's just crazy. But this was really neat. I had never seen this before. Now this, I don't know if this is, okay, this is probably, uh, if it's for Justice League, then it's um, a recreation of his original cover. This is one of the ones kind of from the series that I did. But like I said, he had he had so many that were very elaborate, like Scott Williams saying three or four of the covers, and they were all real detailed with like, you know, characters fighting and background and all that. And mine was so simple. I was like, uh, it's kind of like it was the one that no one wanted to do or something like that. Cause it was, I think he did 50 covers or something. It was crazy. Man, this is great. The inks are really cool. Now this this might have been the thing that Scott Williams inked. Can't remember. Look at this. This is again that pencil look that I'm talking about. Do you see all these different textures again? It almost, some of it looks like mechanical pencil to me because it's so sharp so sharp and dark and then the other like side of the pencil thing is just wild and it's so crazy how he blocks stuff in he really can draw good this is crazy Let's zoom out a little bit so you can kind of get a better read on this that is nuts man that's so good I was able to the, find the pencils of the Tarzan piece that I told you guys that I had inked. Um, I don't have a scan of my inks, but I still have the original here. So when I come across it, I will make a scan of it. Yes, I will, Kitty. Don't say that I won't. Um, and I'll share it um, in some future video. But uh, yeah, I was able to find the pencils. But it was the one that I said that I inked at literally everything. So like if this was if this was the um, this test page, like I mean, I inked all of this stuff that was just like like light pencil and there was some photocopy smudge on it like this stuff i would ink it was pretty funny man he's so good i love how he he sets up hands i need to grab a darker color somehow i grabbed like a light color just so that i have a better point of color there we go. this this was from his facebook so it's not a huge scan some of the scans that they showed were small this is very very cool like thumbnail though man
And Dan Frag also had some real nice stuff that he had said about Neil. Everybody, man, it's, it was interesting because Lee Bermejo said that uh, he he had never spoken to him because he was a little um, like intimidated, and uh, that's kind of how I felt too. Like it's like, uh, and you kind of regret it. Then, ah, uh, so so cool, man, so nice. It's hard to do, hard to do that much line work and have it work without just being a mess. He really controls the values because the thing is, is it's, um, you know, if you go in and your lines are just too dark anywhere or they go too much in like a wrong direction, it's just going to be kind of uh, create weird dark spots and all kinds of weird things will happen. That's really cool. This was cool. Like a little stack of art from uh, like maybe a Comic Con or something. Pretty neat. Ah, oh, look at the He Man. This was about the point, and again, they're kind of come up a little bit out of order, but this is the point where I was just going, like, man, he's done so much good art. There's so many cool pieces, and they all have energy and strength and power and dynamics and I'm just like where's yours? Where's your body of work that's like this? You don't have jack shit pal <laughs> I like these he, he it almost looked like um, he posted it quite a few times so I wasn't sure if it was a print that he colors over or something like that but I'm a big Hulk fan so I don't know it's kind of fun and the colors are wild was interesting very very tight shot of the pencils but i liked i liked how he was like the pencils were getting tighter but more you can really see the underdrawing in this part still like it's really scribbly it's crazy how he's able to clean this stuff up he definitely uses a light box though because I've, I've seen even at conventions i think where um he's got a light box table i thought this was really nice uh, and this is there's another photo of this but this is a very very cool sketch man it's great And again, I wasn't a hundred percent sure if um, the black and white line art is a print, and then he's going in with the Copic and doing the gray for each person. Like the rain is individualized because he had photos of a few of them. I didn't have time to like compare them. This was cool too, man. Man, again, his pencil lines are so amazing. Really, I'm really curious of what what is going on with this. Is, if anyone knows, does he use like three different pencils? Or is he just using it in different ways? Like the side, the tip? Like is it a chisel, kind of chisel tip pencil? Frazetta would do that where it looked like he would sharp with like a buck knife or something. And so you'd have like your pencil lead would be, you know, almost like this kind of thing. You know, if you could see it, like this is the wood of the pencil. So you've got a sharp tip. You can, you know, work from the side. Um, and just you've got like a lot more angles than just a sharp pencil. These are cool. Man, it's powerful stuff. This is cool too. Jim Jim's like Jim's thumbnails and layouts look like that. Jim Lee, um, like he'll he'll get like real loose sketch, but he goes in with these like kind of short like lines that really seem to define stuff. It's pretty wild. This is cool too. Gosh. I really, it's. I'm really curious to try to dissect this stuff and figure out how he gets so much, like life in the drawings. It's just really crazy. Like, is it just because the character's mouth is open? The pose is good too, but like, man, there's just something about it. This was really neat because we had seen like sort of the printed version of this, but man, this looks great. That's so cool, man. 
It just looks fun. That is another thing with his work because I was thinking about like like attempt like if you attempted to do something like this, it's a lot of detail, so it looks um, like I mean I know the amount of work that goes into stuff like this, but the the way that he draws it, he makes it look fun and kind of casual, which is surprising because I mean man, everything is rendered and all these blacks and stuff like this. Yeah, it's really crazy. This is really cool though. This is the um, under underdrawing of that one piece we looked at, or, or close to, to something like that. I like the fists. God, he could really draw. Man, oh man. I thought this was nice. That's really cool. God dang. Look at that Hulk. He looks so scary. <laughs> His arm is so beefy. Oh my god. Beefcake. Look at that. Yeah, I'll probably just stick this up to today and then take tomorrow off monday i've got to shoot a whole ton of videos so they'll be good it gives me a day to just sort of like chill that's great i love this like how he sets up the wrist all of this is really good oh, this is good too i love the hulk <laughs> This is so beefy. Oh my god. This is awesome right here. Yeah, this is cool. I have a photo of him, I think, working on this. That's a really, really great pose. Man, he makes this just look effortless. This is this is a challenging drawing. But he nails it. Man, that's so good. This was really nice. This was cool. He draws great cars. There's a I oh ah, Ghost Rider. Damn, I didn't see that before, dude. This is funny. This reminds me of the DC licensing stuff, and it could have been for licensing, but they'll they'll like they'll want stuff for like uh, merchandise. Like, hey, we need eight drawings of Batman and Robin or Nightwing. Like, um, you know, just standing, nothing too crazy. They'll put it on like backpacks and lunch boxes and stuff like that. This is really good. I have I have a couple of commercial pieces that he did that are really good. I'd never seen them before. They look like Sid Mead drawings. They're crazy. So that was really fun. Oh my god, look at this Hulk. <laughs> it was funny because as I said, I love I love the Hulk, and you could tell that Neil had a lot of fun drawing him because he really he really makes him nuts. His chest is huge. <laughs> this is insane. Oh, it looks so good. I think the sun oh oh Charlotte's got her bed. My cats fight over like the sunshine. Hulk smash. I, I said Charlotte has her bed. Oh. I'm recording though. Has the she stole the sunshine. All right, look at this. Ooh, that is good. Oh my god, look at the top of this train. That is awesome. Somewhere I have the Neil Adams sketchbook. I mean, I have a bunch of his books. I I've, I have um quite a few like i said i've got a pretty decent neil adams collection and comics too um but uh um i'm nearly sure i have the um kind of beige colored like sketchbook that was released by the company that did like wally wood and um Buscema. i can't think of the company's name this was amazing too this is really really good oh my god i i just can't go over how good this guy draws It's insane. <laughs> I 
this is what I'm saying. Like I'm telling you, like at least once, once or twice a year, I'll I'll do kind of what I'm doing right now with with you guys. But I'll I'll go on Heritage. I'll look online. I'll grab out my comics or find you know jpegs and stuff that i've saved i'm sure i have multiple folders of neil stuff and i'll look at it and it just like freaks me out and then i have to like i said i let it marinate <laughs> and then just it'll it'll it just comes to me like I, I i don't i don't know just at some point you go i need to look at more of neil adams's work and then i go back and i'll um study it but i i'm studying it to like get better is what i mean it's a little different than just looking at stuff it's you know you, you you're going to it to try to see like are you ready for this because these are like this is this is no joke there was a series of three of these pieces i don't know if they'll come up in order they're really nice almost like storyboards yeah okay it's a great shot Kelsey could probably tell what, like, focal lens pff, uh, angle that is. I thought this was really cool, too. Evian. So, I don't know if it was the ad for Evian or what. This was the other one. That's wild. Oh, yeah, this is good. Oh, yeah. So this is, I think, an armor cover? Or what book was it? It was. I'm nearly sure this was for a continuity book. I have the comic. I'm almost positive. Like I said, I like this stuff. This was right when I started collecting comics was the 90s continuity stuff. So not the old stuff. I went back and bought all those. Any of them that I could find, I would pick up any of the titles that had continuity on it I was in. Um, but, but this stuff is badass. And it's interesting to me, too, because it, at the time, there were artists that worked for him or were working in comics that you go, I wonder, uh, like, like in this era because michael golden was doing some stuff for neil and neil and michael golden have some similarities going on with their work at this point um but again Go golden was doing stuff for neil but i don't know i don't know if they were just vibing off each other but uh man neil did some really really great and detailed work in here i think people people sleep on continuity and how good it is There's a funny comic that I have that I don't remember where I picked it up, but it's called Skate Man. I don't think... I think it's called Skate Man. I don't think it's a continuity book, but uh, it's it's actually a really, really well-drawn comic book. But it's like a character that's on roller skates. But the way that Neil um, moves the character through panels is incredible. So definitely, at some point, if you get an opportunity, to check out Skate Man. Because it's like... Again, it's, it's one of those ones I never hear people mention, but it's really good. These are nice. Cheerios. He did a lot of commercial work. The stuff paid probably great. They're like, you're a famous comic book artist. And kids love comics. Do Cheerios box. Here's a bunch of money. And you're like, yep. I don't know what year these were done for or for which books. It's hard to tell. I wonder if he has ever drawn Hellboy. I love Hellboy. He seems like he would do like some interesting stuff with Hellboy. Man, a Hellboy story from Neil would have been great. I would have loved a short story from him. Oh, that would have been cool. These are nice. I, I thought this was so funny. I love peanuts, and this is just cute. Really, really funny little piece. <laughs> this was from his Facebook, but man, I don't know. I think that's great. The Woodstocks are funny. This is cool. So it's cool. He, you know, again, this could be advertising art or, or that kind of thing, you know, where you get hired to, it's like, like National Geographic needs like six illustrations of miners or whatever. I'm not, not saying that that's what it's from, but a situation like that. I, I think this is really nice though. It's, it's really well done. I mean, it could be from a photo, but, uh, I, I like, I like the look of it. I'm a big fan of, um, mining. <laughs> 
I, I if you if you follow my channel like a year or two ago, I I follow different people that go into mines and mine for gold and all kinds of different things. Cave exploration. I find it fascinating. <laughs> This is great too. This almost reminds me. I have a really great puzzle that I bought at the zoo, and uh, the uh, the person that illustrated the piece is just insanely good. But there's nothing online from them, so they must have done it under a pen name because I've I searched for them. But this almost looks like something that a zoo would sell as like a puzzle or a poster or something. It's really really well done. Great layout. It's really really a nice layout. God damn. Yeah, like this stuff too, like this crocodile, alligator, whichever it is, um, coming forward and stuff like that. Like these are such good gestures of animals, and you know that if he went in and finished this, it would even look better. And that's a rare. It's not easy to do. Uh, sketching stuff, it's you know, there's a lot that's left to the imagination. When you have to start refining this stuff and finishing the gazelle that's jumping up in the air or this little sort of thing right here, man, it can leave your ass hanging. I did not see a finished version of this, though, unfortunately. So, if anyone knows where it is, this is great, too. Man. Uh, this all day. He, you, he could sell these nonstop. No problem. They're so good. They're so cool looking, too. I'd, I, it's funny because I had said in a Patreon video literally a day and a half ago that um, uh, sometimes I feel a little guilty because I'm a little bored of superheroes. I've been doing it for over 20 years and most of the work that I ever did was revolving around superheroes. So I have other, I like fantasy and adventure and science fiction and stuff like that. So I'm kind of more interested in that right now. But seeing Neil's work on all these superheroes actually got me like excited about superheroes again. Where I was like, you know what, this stuff is cool. Maybe you've just been looking at the wrong superhero books. Because <laughs> when you, you know what it is, is when you remember what the spirit of superhero comics, you know, was, and the energy and the excitement that this stuff created and how cool it was, um, then it grounds it again. And it's not this convoluted other thing. <laughs> I, you know what it, I think part of it too is well I don't want to get into a big thing on modern day comics but um, anyway this is a great great piece I think I might have multiple scans of this and uh, it's possible that I have one in pencil I kind of think that I might but this is really really cool he's so good at having like uh, monsters coming into the scene where their their heads are going into the shot he does it quite often he'll have them coming in from all kinds of directions but this is just fantastic. This this guy right here too is so cool looking. So would look great colored in that watercolor thing that he's been doing, or that when he uses markers, it could look really really badass. So this would be another one that he could do a print of this and and could have colored multiple versions of it, and they would they would sell like hotcakes. Oh, this is so good. Almost a similar vibe, but these are all humans around him, so I'm assuming that it's not for the same comic. I've got a few shots of this. I, re I really like this. Um, Batman looks awesome. I didn't even realize. I didn't. I hadn't seen the big arm. Man, that's crazy. That is really cool. But what I was really blown away by is really like how he did Superman's leg right there. For some reason, man, it's just really powerful. And Batman's knee. Neil always crushes it with like the knee and like leg. This stuff. He's really good at it. He makes it look so complicated. He's just got all these like cool shadows always like running over it. Man. The tech on the arm is really cool. Oh, and the other one has got it too. It's in pencil. Okay, I'm, sorry. When I'm shooting videos, sometimes I don't. I'm not looking at the whole piece at once. I'm looking at little spots and trying to just kind of take it. That's really really cool. Okay. Has him working on it. No fear, man. He's going in on those nice pencils. 
inking away. He probably he might even be doing this at a comic convention, which is crazy. Look at this. This is so good. But do you do you see like how how dynamic this work is? And if you're someone that draws and you think of your own work, are you getting this level of excitement? Are you getting this this the height of the moments that kind of that I mean, Frazetta stuff in a weird way almost feels somewhat posed compared to Neil, where where I can picture more shots of people like standing still in Frazetta pieces. When Frank has got a lot of energy, trust me, you know all of you know how much I love Frazetta stuff. Um, but uh, I mean, Neil actually almost ramps it up more, where like it's almost it's almost always like on eleven. That's pretty wild. I mean, nobody is, like, she's leaning over. This guy is, like, not not even just, it's not even that he's he's leaning, but he's, like, leaning and then leaning into the lean. <laughs> it's almost like, it is in a weird way. I don't know if this, like, he, I'm sure it's, it's he's, he's um, got it down, but it could be something along the lines of that like where it's like he does the first pose and gets it pretty dynamic and then he knows that he needs to now make it even more dynamic more you know twist it a little bit more duck the head a little bit more make that face you know um a little more like intense this is him working His Catwoman's the her uh this, oh okay I see this is her elbow here I and mean, then that's a, it's like her arms look really long but I see what it is now even this Batman gesture is like he's like it's kind of slunking down why are you slunking Batman these were cute pictures so I grabbed them there's two of him celebrating his birthday I really liked them so I thought I would throw them in. He looks a lot like my 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 dad's mom's side of my family. It's funny, like like we're I both probably have some similar heritage. Uh, we're gonna miss you, Neil. But you're so so influential to all of us. All right, look at this. This is so good. Now, if I was gonna guess, I would say that this was probably done in the '90s early 90s mid 90s because it feels like the continuity stuff to me but i could be wrong and it could be a different time area but but um i mean this feels right off of like one of his continuity covers that's really good uh so much to learn from this guy oh this is awesome i'd never seen this piece So this is Adams and Let's see if we can read this. Hmm. That's tough. I'm not sure whose name that is. Really, really cool piece though, but yeah, I had never seen this armor cover. Number eight. I'll definitely have to look for this. Now the continuity stuff will probably start going up and cost megalith this is a this is a cool piece megalith is an interesting character i i remember reading them uh when i would buy them and and i like i said i had picked up all the um, back issues from before but uh yeah this is funny he's big <laughs> he's a megalith oh look at this this was so badass man that is so cool it's like the side of like a mountain with like waterfalls, but it's made out of like a rocky, some sort of prehistoric reptilian beast. Really, really beautiful inks in there. Well, the whole thing, but man, this this is like 
This is gorgeous. <gasps> gorgeous. He makes drawing look fun, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of work. Okay, so this is that piece again. We'll see if I have the pencils. This is hybrids. So this was another continuity title. A lot of um, a lot of the continuity books did have actual wraparound covers. Um, I'm not saying that this is, but um, they because cover gimmicks were getting pretty big at that point because of the image thing, and so Neil was right there, making sure to have a, a lot of um, die cut covers and stuff like that. Fun stuff, honestly. Look at this. this is so good. we'd seen this before, but. Just when I was going through and saving files, I just want to make sure that I, it was what I was thinking it was. This was cool. So these, this is um, an X Men cover, wraparound cover. It was super badass. And then this is a really nice piece too. So these are at the continuity office in probably New York. It could be L. I think he had one in L. A. too. But uh, you're gonna see some other original art that's really rare and oh my god, would be so expensive coming up. So this was cool. <laughs> Their mouths are funny. Yes, yeah, so wild. So much to learn. I've seen a few different shots of this piece, but this looks like it while it was like while it was being drawn. This is so neal. This is that same piece. Is it the uh, same scan? Oh, it's like a little, like a lot, not as f fully inked, I don't think. I think one, the other one might have been um, finished, and this looks like it maybe has a little pencil, more pencil on it. But this was a really cool photo. It's fun. I always love seeing artists work. It's nice to see Neil, and then he's got this nice big piece of painting that he's doing. It's it's interesting because it's got ink lines on it. I mean, um, lines that look like ink lines. This is probably the continuity offices. I, I like I like I had said like there's there's something neat about Neil that like he always wore like a dress shirt and a tie. New York, he went to the offices. He's like on the ninth floor of some building in like, you know, New York City, and it's just all like how cartoonists you know like he keeps it like old school these are cool he's just signing prints but uh you can see this is looks like a light box that he probably works on for comic stuff and uh all of his tools in the tray diet coke oh here's some pencils so it looks like he's using like number two uh, or not i mean whatever just a standard pencil now it's not to say that that's what he draws with all the time but he may Someone will know. Does Neil just draw with a regular Ticonderoga pencil? Dead man. I thought this was really nice too. He does real nice stuff on this colored paper. Boy, I'll tell you what, they're they're really, really just nice looking pieces. Man, he's so good. The rendering on the face this is just great. Oh, this was cool. I had never seen this before. I'm a big Punisher fan, so. All right, how about I could see Mr. Castle shooting people? It's always a good day. This is interesting how he's got the the like the bullets from the gun that lights up the shoe, or you know what I mean, like a like you're seeing through the um, flash. This is, again, it's, it's, I don't know if it's the same exact piece, but I, I like the way that this photo looks, so I, I saved this one. Even though it's got the glare on it, I like the darkness of gray. Like the shadow, kind of the shadowing on it made it actually feel even more um, kind of luminous um, compared to the um, the one where, where it was like kind of lit more evenly. So and the, even the shadow in the water is like a little darker. He said, I'm, I'm under the... Like my thought possibly is that these may have been black and white prints that each one he would go in and do a custom rain for you, but I could be wrong on that. But I'd have to just go back and compare the file sign time. So I'd never seen this before either. So this is a obviously a Death Dealer piece. I don't know if this is a cover for Incendium. 
which was the company that I worked for to do the um, Joe Satriani Crystal Planet book. Um, and then David Finch and I have a, a Death Dealer cover. Um, but this is cool. I, I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, I, I'm I'm particular about the look of Frazetta's characters. And I, I feel like overall Neil actually did a really good job on this. Like this has got the creepy mood. And um, I actually like these characters kind of dissolving in and out of stuff. It, it definitely creates the right atmosphere. Frazetta left a lot to your imagination in any of his drawings. There's always room for you to create more. And and his characters, when they're not in those environments, to me, sometimes it doesn't work as well. So this is Bucky O'Hare. Um, now this could be him sharing a golden page. I don't know exactly like I can't, I can't remember. I mean, I've I've seen Bucky O'Hare and I have him, um, but I can't remember. This this could be just a piece of art that Neil owns from Golden. He may have inked it, may have laid it out. I don't know the circumstances of it, but anyway. But Neil shared it, so this is cool. So this is Dick Giordano inks on this. Oh man, this is so good. So he did a riff off this. There's a har I think it's Harley Quinn. Um, and maybe Superman, we'll see. There's some, I have a couple of scans of it, but uh, he, he kind of emulated the layout of this page. But Mass is cool. This is a very iconic book, honestly. A lot of people remember it, and Ali and Superman were so famous. So this was the photo I was talking about. So this is very interesting. So they were doing tours at um, Continuity in New York, and um, they hung art that they keep in probably a very very safe place but these are really really iconic covers and if these are the originals this is these are worth i mean a lot like a lot a lot if man if these are the originals seriously this could this could easily oops, sorry uh, um several million dollars just for these five pieces i'm not even kidding Ah, that is wild. I I don't yeah, it's it's hard for me to tell from this photo if they're like this looks like original art. I mean they, they all could be original art. It's very possible he kept them all. If he did, like I said, this is worth a fortune. I I would say at least two or three million dollars maybe more i mean honestly it could could if there was a bidding war on any of them these are all just man crazy this is great too really really nice things T tight tight for him tight tight on him but then here it, it's not so much but you could see like how he handled the waggle thing that i'm talking about here where um he did it with pointed lines, and then even in here, he gets it too. So when he inks himself, um, he is actually able to keep some of that calligraphy. But you can see how this influenced maybe like someone like Scott Williams, you know, throughout his career. Because uh, Scott is a huge Neil Adams fan for sure. So I guarantee he got a lot. He got a lot from Neil and also Bray Windsor Smith. And I mean, Scott could tell you all of his favorites, but uh, this is nice. I thought this was really cool. Video drone. That was a very, very cool movie I don't know what this is it's like a car driving through the thing and then this looks like maybe the 9-11 tribute piece it's nice this is the Harley Superman so you can it's nice that we saw it kind of close but this this was probably done much more well obviously more recently but um, you know maybe in the last like five five to ten years I don't know. Get him, Harley. Kick his butt. Look at this. Whew. I didn't even get a look at these. I I saw the file. I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to grab this. What do we got? Oh, man. Damn. Wow. Look, I mean, okay, so... Look at the, how nice these layouts are, just from this distance. Every single page just is so dynamic. It's so um, 
like the sizes, the shapes that he's using, the way that he puts black on the page, they all read so clear, even from a low resolution photo. Um, and you know, if we're at a decent distance from them, but they all just are clear. When people talk about clear storytelling, it's not only that what you've drawn makes sense in the panel, but that that it's um, like, you know, it's got um, a compositional balance, a size variety, movement that lets your eye kind of dance around the page, you know, whatever the patterns are that you're kind of directing the eye with. Um, and it's just fun, you know. God, look at this pose right here. He's got a really cool upshot right there. Oop. At this point, you're going to tell me I can't rotate a page Photoshop? Come on. Yeah, this is really nice. This this it, this story should have been printed in black and white. And these were cool. We've seen a few different scans and stuff of this. I'd never seen this. This looks somewhat familiar. This I think I've seen. This was the one uh, Ghost Rider piece that we saw a little piece of. I, I actually like that. The, a lot of black on Ghost Rider. He made him really shadowy. And then these are cool. He, he just looks like he's having fun all the damn time. His drawings are just so cool. He, he found something that he loved and was good at and just kicked ass his whole life on it. It's a nice hand. Nice wrist. He's really good with hands and wrists. Oh, man. He crushes it with this dude. At the position he's got his feet in. <laughs> so cool. God. Man, that is awesome. They're cool looking boots, too. Shoes and boots and boots. Megalith. He's looking small there compared to the other, the other shot of him. So this is 2013. This is a long time after he'd originally done the book. This was great, too. So this is some sort of montage print, I think, that he put together, maybe for, like, shows. It's really, really cool, though. Man, this middle section, this is great. This is so hard to do. To put that much rendering and shadow on a face... It really, it just, it takes, it takes getting used to, because it really feels like it changes the way that um, your structure is. Because if you, if you throw the lines kind of like in the wrong spot or the wrong direction of the rendering and stuff like that, it can really start to create weird optical illusions. And so, um, you know, he handles it so well. It's the look, it just looks effortless. But this was interesting too. I'd never seen this always a fan of like Star Wars co comic art that looks like old school comic art we get a lot of like super slick you know computer computer stuff but uh, I, I I like kind of seeing it where it looks like 70s art kind of connects the dots between even though I know this is a more recent movie but it's still like Star Wars comic art to me sometimes I, I put it more in this category than uh, other things this is cool too Oh man, look at this. God, that is really cool. This is just awesome. Man, that whole figure is great, actually. The way that his feet and legs are going in. Oh my gosh. God, he is so good.
I thought this was really cool. So they were talking about that they were going to um, take this down off the wall in the post um, to make room for some other stuff. I don't know. I, I talked about uh, for Blaster Kid, I created a mood board for myself. Um, and and I've, I've kind of divided it into like the main character, um, the, the city that she's from, and just, just so that I have things that colors, shapes, ideas, and stuff like that. And then you, you start to compile it with your own drawings too. But he may have, he may have put this together for himself as he was drawing. i he did a Superman Batman book. And so this looks like, um, like a Clark Lois, you know, whatever this character is the focus of them. Just, just so that you kind of keep thing on, on, keep things on model when you're drawing them. Cause it's easy to, um, assume that it's like, oh, I mean, he'll, he'll draw Lois Lane the same every time. But, uh, if you haven't drawn her for a few weeks, like say the story st starts to head a different direction and you've been drawing monsters for four or five weeks, all of a sudden you're like, oh man, I haven't drawn suit like Superman just like in a while like what was i doing with his hair so things like that can help you um remember what to do this is cool again you can kind of see that like thin line shaded line uh waggle line that he does in here it's really fascinating to me but oh look at this this is that one god dang It's just such a cool sketch. How he tightens up from this is crazy. So it's it's like like you figure this is like the underdrawing, and then he's he's finding his like lines that he's gonna commit to and just popping them in. This is really nice. The spear, pop, um, puncturing the flesh, kind of pulling with it. These are the ones that kind of give me like a tiny bit of like a Barry Windsor Smith um, sort of feel. Or vice versa, but you, you know what I mean. Just a. It's like if you're a fan of Barry Windsor Smith, this might like tick some boxes for you. I thought this was cool. Again, no, no one is just deadpan faced bored, you know, with the lips shut, and no expression. There's always tension and drama and excitement. I saw that. I was just seeing if there was anything in there. I'd never seen this page before. Or was this on the wall? No, no, no. This is nice, though. I mean, he's got a nice, big, exciting, like, uh, top panel. This is really cool, where he removes the panel border. Then you've got a really, really nice, like, almost, like, establishing shot of where they are. This is really cool with this sort of almost movie poster montage thing. I mean, it's really, really great. Really, again, like those pieces I was talking about where you look at them on the wall. This has got it all. The same thing. It reads crystal clear. It's dynamic. His blacks are very nicely laid out through the page. Compositionally, he moves you through the page really well. You've got all these nice shapes that just send you right to where, where he wants you to look. Um, size differences. We've got some stuff that's big. We've got things that are smaller. Um, it's just excellent. Is this him working on it? We may have seen this one before, too, the photo. On their Facebook, sometimes they were re, they would re-upload uh, similar, uh, the, the same images over time. Thought this was really cool. I really like what he was doing with the hair up here. It's got like nice volume to it, and the little scraggly ends are neat. And then it's kind of fun that you get to see it sort of partially inked. You think so too, Kitty? Okay. loose doodle but it is good this was really cool so this might be from that wolverine thing that we were just looking at like an ink page it looks like wolvie let's say it. it is wolverine okay thanks kitty but yeah i thought this was really really cool 
they didn't have a black and white or a pencil version of it. This was the only version that was up on his thing, but I'd never seen it before, so I grabbed it. Oh, yeah, this. So this isn't a huge scan, but look at this piece. This looks like it was maybe done for like some sort of movie or commercial project. I'm not really 100% sure what it is. It's really nice, though. Very, like I said, it reminded me a little bit of Sid Mead. Um, just like like vintage concept art. This is um, Valeria Shebat. This is a continuity um, thing. Cool cover. I like Batman down here. Like this creepy thing. This is nice. <laughs> He's, his, yeah, his acting really comes through even in these doodles, though. Like, there's a lot of personality just in this, like, second panel with them all kind of coming in. Can't really tell who each character is, and they're all sort of standing in funny ways. This is cool. Man. This was neat. We looked at this cover yesterday. I don't remember if it was a black and white or a color version, but when I saw this, I was like, ooh, that's cool. Now, I'm wondering if this is a recreation of it, because it seems odd that it would be on Kubert school paper, just based on when this was originally done. So, awesome. this was neat. And a remark, too. His zombie remark is great, but man, this is so cool. Man, God, he's so great. This, I had never seen this before. Look at this, it's so cool. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. I don't even know how long something like this would take to draw. Sorry, I don't have a better scan of it. So this is from Continuity? I don't recognize this. Uh, continuity might just be that he's, like maybe this was a movie pitch? It's like Fifth Element or something? I don't even know. Let me know what this is. If this is a comic and it's drawn like this, this is crazy. It's making Jeff Darrow look lazy. Darrow's pretty crazy, though, actually. Is... No? These are all different images. I was like, is this part of this scene? But it isn't. Mass is great. But this was interesting. I had never seen this before, but it's like a very psychedelic, like, painted thing. I like it, though. Looks like it could be out of, like, a Ralph Bashy, Bashy movie or... I can't, I can't remember how to say his name. Neil Adams, Rowdy and Beautiful Women. We had seen this before, but this looks like it's more rendered or darker skin of it. I want to see one thing really quick. I, 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 I saw this piece. I have this comic book, so I thought that was kind of neat. Because I don't think... Yeah, it's not... He doesn't have his name on the cover... So I never knew who it was, but I always liked the cover, and so I had kept the comic. But uh, I think it's Enemy Ace? Or maybe, I don't know. I, I think that's what it was. Oh, I wanted to see how many pieces we have left. Let me just see. Oh, not too many. Okay. I knew this video would be long, but I just wasn't sure. Oh, man, again, he's just crazy with these upshots. So hard to do, and he does it so well. Let me see if I can rotate this. That still won't let me rotate it. Kiss my ass, Photoshop lazy program you plenty of ram nothing is open in the background 16 gigs of ram you can't rotate a freaking jpeg please be curious of what this looked like when it was done i i can't really make out what like the creature would ultimately look like
Oh, this is really cool. I have a photo of the cover of the comic too, but um, yeah, this is really, really wild. It's really cool. Man, look at the line work on this. Is is someone who was an inker and would ink other people, like, you really almost would have to do this on yourself. Because this is just so off the grid in terms of, like, I mean, it looks great to me, but, um, you know, like, if you handled people's drawings and inked with this kind of a crazy line they'd be like what in the world <laughs> that looks so good this was the piece okay so this 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 is not my inks this is the pencil drawing this is the almost i was probably one of the very very first sample pieces that i ever inked i was in the early 90s and um I met an inker and he gave me like 12 photocopies and one of them was this but it was a very low res photo of it and um I inked every single pixel of this drawing. I mean, where these lines faded, I'm telling you, I would just draw dots and I would try to mimic everything exactly. I did it all with one rapidograph, the gray one. But uh, I still have it somewhere. I'll find it and I'll, I'll share it. But uh, yeah, that's crazy. But that was one of my very first samples, but Neil crushed it. Oh. This is cool. This is the cover printed. And it looks like it was inked a different way. Um, so that the, the other version we saw may have been like a, a thumbnail or the prelim. But uh, I honestly, I think like he could have gotten away with just using that other one. I think it, it looked really cool. So this is weird Western tales. This was really interesting. I, I'm assuming that it's Neil. Um, but it has a lot of a Kirby vibe, and um, yeah, he. It's interesting that he's using that Kubert Art Store paper, Strathmore four hundred series. I don't know if that means it's real thick. I have to try that paper someday. Be curious of what it's like. The funny thing for me is I don't like to draw on this side of the board. If I bought this paper, I would work on the back. I don't like any of this stuff on it. When I draw, it all distracts my eye. It's funny. But, uh, yeah, I don't like lines. I don't want any writing. This is the um, pencils of the piece that I inked. So they sent me basically this. I turned it blue, printed it out 11 by 17, and then inked it. Um, so but you could see that it was, it was a little a little nondescript. Um you know, I mean, it's 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 all there, but um, this kind of never felt finished to me. So I went in and kind of balanced it out, and it's just little things. I mean, I mean, I trust me, I'm not taking credit for it. The hands were a little unfinished. The hands felt a little small to me um, compared to his body, but uh, you know, like the fists felt just a little tiny. But, but anyway, but that that's what I worked from. All right, let's go. This is another one of those pieces. So these are all homages to his own classic covers, but then just done for other books. These are from an unpublished X-Men story. I got them off of a blog online. They're pretty cool. They're they're actually tight for Neil, like like tight tighter and cleaner than some of the other stuff that we've seen. His face, but yeah, it's funny. This is so um, um, contained for Neil. Here we go. This is wild, Neil. This is what's in his heart. The fact that he can shift gears and though and make something so refined is pretty impressive, to be honest. God, this right here, it's just incredible to me how he scribbles and shades. I want to be able to do that. Teach me, Neil. Come to me in my dreams. Give me the techniques. What do I need to practice? I'm putting it out in the universe. And then he'll come. It'll be just like this. I'll be asleep. And all of a sudden, Xavier is going to come and tell me the, the process. And then I'll wake up. 
be like by crumb. <laughs> yeah, this is so trippy. It's I, I am amazed that he drew these so clean. I don't know if maybe um, he thought that it was going to be inked by someone else. Uh, uh, like maybe like someone that wouldn't normally ink him, and so he wanted to make sure that it was all there. Because definitely pencilers will pencil different um, for their regular inker. And then if they know someone that doesn't maybe know their work, they have to kind of like get into that person's mind. They're like, okay, like so-and-so is going to ink this. And based on what I kind of see in their work, they're going to maybe need this information to uh, get me where I want this to go. If I give them my, my um, loose stuff, they, they might not uh, be able to handle as well. So this is very clean. still dynamic though it is still dynamic okay that's it that was really fun like i said it's very very inspi inspiring to me incredibly humbling and um hopefully really educational I, I mean i think sharing the work with all of you seeing it and then talking about it and then the stuff that i'm learning from the comment section uh it's it's just all good it's I said he kind of rekindled my interest in superheroes which i was wasn't expecting but uh yeah seeing that i was like yeah you know what this stuff is cool or the care like i don't know it's not so much that i'm burnt on superheroes i'm, I'm like i don't know what it is i've really been able to put my finger on it but Neil does them good, that's for sure. So, all right, you guys have a great day. I'm going to upload this today, so we won't have Super Fun Sunday tomorrow, but uh, anyone that made it to the end of this video probably would already guess that. And then I'll be back either Monday or Tuesday with uh, more 10 minutes with. So you guys have a great day. Thank you so much, Neil Adams, for your body of work in comics and just oodles of inspiration and awesome art. Uh, you know, you won't be forgotten, that is for sure. So, all right, talk to you guys later. Bye.